Hey guys, this is 101 Smith, and today I'm bringing you an unboxing. Not of a Gunpla, not of an action figure. I'm bringing you an unboxing of a new guitar. Well, new is a phrase that could be debated here, but it's new to me. This is the PRS SE Custom Clint Lowry from the main guitarist from Seven Dust. Now, to explain the guitar aspect of the channel, I know it's been kind of probably, huh, or weird for you guys because I was doing Gunpla reviews for two years and you just started randomly seeing me play guitar. You might know the story if you're on Instagram, but um, I never really got to explain it to you guys, so let me try to kind of go at you and try to give you the backstory of this. So I've been playing guitar on and off since I was about 18. When I was 13, I fell in love with Korn and Seether, Ozzy Osbourne, Lincoln. I've always been in love with Linkin Park, but this was before I knew this is rock and metal. But when I was 13, I fell in love with rock and metal, specifically new metal, alternative metal, industrial metal, and post grunge. And that always continued my love for music. And then when I was 18, I wanted a guitar. I had a classmate at the time who had a shitty Behringer guitar. He sold it to me for $75. I only ended up paying 15 because at the time I was not really going to school at this point. It was senior year of high school and I kind of just fell out and ended up repeating 12th grade because of personal issues. So I never got to pay the guy I bought the guitar or the guy that I bought my basic amp with and he chased it after me for a year, which is something I'm not quite proud of now as an adult. I just didn't have the money and I really just didn't give a fuck about school at that point or anyone in it. So I had this shitty Behringer Stratocaster tried to learn guitar of it, but it would constantly cut me up, and I never got it quite to sounding like I wanted to, because I'm like, oh, this doesn't sound metal. It sounds too folky. So I w had been debating since probably some 2017 to get a new guitar, and then I went through my, my probably my most significant low, 2018 to 2019, and I was a wreck, and everyone was just searching for answers. I tried, obviously I had Gunpla at this point, but even Gunpla wasn't doing it for me anymore. So, you know, my parents were just like searching for answers, searching for anything just to make me happy again, because I was so miserable. I, was, I wasn't getting out of bed at all. I remember Christmas 2018, my dad's like, what, Reggie, what do you want for Christmas? anything what would put a smile back on your face you've been so low for so long i just said i want a guitar do in my demo do you already have one yeah but it kind of sucks i want i want an ibanez i want like a real metal guitar so we get what i like to dub my depression guitar the red ibanez geo that you guys always see me play with and i usually always go back to that because it has a lot of significant meaning to me obviously and also, it's my go-to because I kind of call it, you know, I have always referred to myself as the human Swiss Army knife. The Geo is my guitar equivalent to a Swiss Army knife. It can do anything. Now, I'm not particularly happy with the sound these days. It feels very, no matter what I do, I've taken it to get set up, tuned up. It's in tuning. I got it worked on multiple times. I can't quite get the sound where I want it to be, but I realized at some point it wasn't just that, it was just, I gotta redo the pickups, so that's gonna be a project in the near future. So that's the Ibanez Geo, that's my depression guitar. And then overall, I just moved on and kept growing, more so this year than any other year, because what's the, you know, everyone's stuck at home. You're gonna fall into your hobbies, both old and new. I already have Gunpla and we're going to hundreds at this point, but, um, you know, as you guys saw when I did the corn video, that was a seven string PRS, which I loved, but I got it by accident. 
I wanted a second guitar. I always go to Ibanez because of Corn and Slipknot. That brand is the brand I think of straight up metal. You want a riffer, you want a shredder, Ibanez. But PRS, I've heard nothing but good things, but and I have come to realize that a lot of my favorite bands growing up ended up using PRS from Breaking Benjamin to Three Days Grace, Ultra Bridge with the Tremonti signature that he developed later on, Disturbed, Chevelle that I just got into this year and part of me is like, why the fuck did I get into Chevelle earlier? I got this type of thinking you can do us in and I'm like, why didn't I listen to this earlier? <laughs> that album kicked ass and I just fell in love with Chevelle, but a lot of these bands that I come to grew up with as a kid, I'm realizing, oh my God, all of these guys at one point use PRS. Now, obviously, Breaking Benjamin or Benjamin Burley has moved on to ESP and Pete from Chevelle, he moved on to Fender. But that PRS guitar, that uh, Custom 24, has been influential to a lot of the bands that I loved. And I said, why don't I get one? I got one. It wasn't the one I wanted, but I was fucking happy with it because it was a seven string. I ordered it on Guitar Center and it was a seven string. I'm like, I just wanted a black PRS. I didn't want a seven string, but I could play fucking corn songs now. So I did, because I did want a PRS, but it wasn't the one I wanted. So finally, um, you know, I wanted that baritone. So the thing that got me on it, on the Clint Lowry, was two of my favorite guitar cover channels, Mystic Guitar 77, Franz, George, the guys, two of the guys who make me want to actually play guitar on YouTube. and. Not that I'm the greatest in the world, but you know, they inspire me and they've always have that same Clint Lowry guitar, that cool kind of slick black guitar with the CL inlays. It just looks so heavy, but so simple at the same time. I really wanted that. And I was looking for it for a year. That was the guitar I really wanted. I can't find it or I couldn't find it because it's been out of stock or out of production since 2015. It costs $700, which is to say it's not that expensive. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that expensive, but for a guy who, whose original hobby, you might spend at max 300 for a perfect grade. It, you know, you kind of have to readjust your mindset into what is too much. In the grand scheme of the guitar world, 700 isn't that much. But for the average everyday dude, that's a lot of money, especially for a guy for me who up until this past year never had steady income. <laughs> but now that I'm an adult and I can actually have a job and hold a job and actually have decent income, I got some fun money to spend every now and then. I found it on Reverb for a thousand. And it's more than I was expecting to spend, but it's worth it because it's almost brand new. From what the guy told me, he only uses it in studio work. But what makes it so special is that it's signed by Clint himself. With It was a radio contest giveaway guitar that this guy who happened to have it, which his name is Mike, and I will plug him to hell because without him I wouldn't have this guitar. As far as I know, he doesn't have any items on sale or reverb, but please go check him out if you're ever interested in an instrument. This dude was working. I was like, I got 800 right now, and I get paid on Tuesday with the rest of the 200. If I give you the 800 right now and you wait until Thursday, can I have this guitar? He fucking said yes. And now it's mine. And now I'm excited because this was the guitar I wanted. This was the baritone that I wanted. I love my seven string, and I probably should play it more so I could learn some more corn songs, but this was the baritone that I want. So I'm gonna unbox it for you guys here, and we're gonna go check it out. All right, so I've got my tripod as high as it can go, and I can still barely get this on frame. This thing can go up to about six feet tall. I'm 6'6", six, six, so this tells you how big this box is. So I'm gonna go get a knife quickly. 
And now we're gonna unbox this thing from, or it's supposed to be unboxed, so hold on a second. This is gonna take a few minutes, sorry guys. This box is huge! Alright, <laughs> kinda of one of those deals where the box is actually bigger than the actual product. And that happens. Oh wow, this guy packages this thing pretty well. It's trying to make it as secure as humanly possible. So thank you, Mike. So it's got one of the things that the original PRS came with was the carrying case, which I was able to get as well. So that was one nice bonus thrown in there for me. Oh god. Oh, I gotta do a big cleanup afterwards. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god, here he is. Uh, the bag itself, outside of all the cotton. Get rid of all the cotton. Or at least some of it I can. And. We'll know what the size because. I'm curious. B. Got this paperwork. And this paperwork is the actual documentation of this being a signature sign to from the Maori. And I'll read it here. Exclusive SE signature model signed by Clint Lowry, lead guitarist for Seven Dust. During his 25 year career, the multi instrumentalist singer and producer has been a pioneer in modern rock music and is frequently cited as a top influence for musicians across many genres. Lowry is recognized worldwide for his raw melodies and empowering riffs. The signed guitar is a collector's item you don't want to pass up. Donated by Clinton Lowry, Paul Reed Smith Guitars, values at $1,000. So, that's the official paperwork that this is in fact signed. So, what else? And here, we have the original pickups for the guitar. Now, now this guitar is not exactly new per se. The previous owner, Mike, did do some modifications and we talked over it. One of the modifications that he did was replace the standard PRS pickups with the Seymour Duncan Custom 5 for the bridge pickups. And for a lot of metal musicians, or even myself, especially myself, the bridge, the bridge pickups one of the more important ones. It gives you that heavy rift. From what I heard, the basic pickups were fine, but he wanted to do some customs, and he said it would wow me. So the plan is to use these pickups on my Ibanez to get the sound that I really want. Because even if it's not a custom, it should sound a lot better than the standard pickups that were included. Oh, he even gave me some picks. Demo. Awesome, dude. Thanks. And now, the grand finale. <laughs> oh my god. It's Christmas in October. <laughs> So, this is it, the PRS Clint Lowry. It's actually smaller than I thought it would be, to be honest. Um, I was, this is a baritone, I know it's like a 25 and a half scale length. 
smaller than um, the seven string. And here is the sign signature protected by Clint, Mr. Clint Lowry himself. Uh, the other modification that Mike did was in the back of the neck. He also kind of trimmed down the paint scheme for it so that it was more of a satin finish than the gloss finish that the rest of the guitar is in. And here we are. So now that we know what the guitar looks like, we gotta hear what it sounds like. So from my understanding from the person, the previous owner, this is mailed to me in drop B. And the funny thing is, I don't know too many drop B rips off the top of my head. I've always been a drop C sharp, drop A sharp, A standard, drop A guy. So you kind of know the vibe that I give off when I play my guitar. So uh, I do, I might know a few rips. So what I'm gonna do is I got my spark plug plugged up to my computer and I'm gonna play you guys the songs or the few riffs that I know on top of my head. I'm not gonna fiddle with the application. This is the smart amp, so I can make it sound like whoever I want it to be. I'm gonna play it unfiltered, both the guitar and the amp itself. So let's see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. I'm sorry guys <laughs> so that is my kind of demo for this PRS Clint Lowry here first let me turn off the camera <laughs> that's kind of annoying after a while but that is kind of my unboxing of the PRS Clint Lowry uh, it did sound really great from what I can tell from the Spark Amp, but one thing I'm noticing with the Spark Amp, and this isn't having to do anything with the guitar per se, um, it just sounds so muddy in comparison to a lot of amps that I use, whereas the guitar sounds really well put together, so that's a different thing, but I see a good feature with this, so I'll see you guys later.